My name is Victor Roberts. I am the last surviving charter member of Beta Nu Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. The other uh, members that were with me on the ship were Earl Cook, L. Hugh Kendall, O.G. Wilkerson, and uh, Arthur Smith. We were all at uh, Stowe Teachers College then in the uh, 1941, uh, the school at that prior to that was only, the teacher's college was only for the women. The men could attend junior college for two years. But in uh, January of 1941, uh, the first class of men were admitted to the teacher's college. And uh, in the fall of uh, 41, uh, I, I was uh, accepted into the teacher's college. At that time, there were no fraternities allowed on the campus because it was a two-year uh, college uh, and they only had sororities for the women. But after the men were admitted in the fall of 1941, a number of us got together. The Alphas, they had gotten some uh, fellows that they had recruited, the Omegas also. But uh, I had always been inspired by Kappa brothers that I had known through the years my instructors in some of the uh, at schools uh, were, were Kappas, and I was really inspired by the things that they had accomplished. And also some of the uh, classmates of mine are those that had gra graduated from high school prior to my coming to school were also Kappa brothers, and many of them had gone to Lincoln University, which I had up the opportunity to visit several times. And I was inspired by what the Kappa brothers were doing up there at Alpha Mu Chapter in uh, Jefferson City. So we got together, Earl and I, uh, and started thinking about maybe we could get a chapter started in St. Louis, uh, an undergrad chapter. So we contacted a number of the brothers from the St. Louis alumni chapter, some of our teachers, and uh, got information on what we had to do to initiate a chapter at the Stowe Teachers College. So through their inspiration, we talked about it and then we got the ideas of what had to be done and instructions of what we had to do to get it. So after we had done preparations and had instructions from some of our teachers and others that were members of the uh, St. Louis alumni chapter, we approached the president of Stowe Teachers College, Dr. Ruth Harris, and asked her permission for us to start a chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi at Stowe Teachers College. And we, I think prior to that, uh, the Alpha, she had given permission to them. And so she was kind of reluctant at first to allow another chapter to get started there. But uh, we were persistent and oh, I think maybe four or five of our instructors or, or professors at um, Stowe Teachers College were Kappas and so they kind of went in our behalf to help us get started. And so in the fall of 1941, uh, we had about all oh, seven, eight of the guys that we had approached and asked them if they would be interested in, in being Kappas also. So in this manner, we were able to get some that were interested and we had to check behind them and see uh, if they, what their scholastic uh, averages were because you had to have a C plus average to become a member of the fraternity. And uh, out of the groups that we had, we had these uh, five brothers that we went through that had met all these scholastic uh, requirements and the attendance and grades and so forth at the school. So we started meeting together. And at the time when we were wanted to get the scroller club started also because we couldn't take all of them in at one time, uh, we went to the president of the school and told him we wanted to get a scroller chapter. And, that they would, could wear uh, little uh, caps with the scrollers would have had a K on it and were red. And at that time, she told us that, uh, that we just needed to get our group started and we couldn't have a scroller club. So what we did to circumvent things like she was said, we got some little green beanie caps that we had and put a, a uh, S on that to indicate scrollers. So this way we kind of circumvented her request that we not do it. But uh, we uh, got together and we met with the alumni chapter a number of times and they instructed us what we had to do and what we had to uh, be required to be a Kappa brother. 
And uh, in the meantime, uh, they were getting all the information together and sent it to the headquarters of Kappa's to uh, ask for a charter for Stowe Teachers College. And uh, so we uh, continued to study and we had to learn all the information and all the history and everything that had to be recited to be a good Kappa brother. And uh, I think around uh, the end of the year, uh, 1st of January, uh, the Grand Chapter uh, decided we met all the requirements and they gave us the uh, go ahead to become a charter chapter of undergraduate, undergraduate chapter in St. Louis. And so we kept meeting with the alumni chapter and finally we had a date set, which I think was February the uh, 12th, 1942, when they would initiate us and let the, charter, uh, the chapter begin. And we also had received the name Beta Nu, which was the next in line because as you all know, the um, different chapters started with Alpha and they have gone all the way through. The last time I looked in the Kappa Journal, we were up to, uh, was it Kappa, I guess, a, a Kappa or something chapters, and they had really gone through the alphabet three or four times the Greek alphabet. But uh, after we got, uh, had our initiation, we had uh, recruited more brothers for the uh, Scrollers Club, and in the spring of uh, 1942, uh, we were able to initiate three more brothers into the, uh, our chapter because we had uh, initiation scheduled for spring and fall. And by that, we had, uh, had uh, it gradually grown to eight in our um, scroller chapter head. We had about, or oh, at least 15 or 16 more young brothers there that aspired to be Kappas. So after that, uh, during the uh, fall of 42, uh, after, as you know, the World War II had broken out, and by that time, the number of the brothers were being uh, had been in, uh, in uh, uh, were being drafted into the military. So at that time, as things went along, we, um, I myself was drafted in in January of 1943. So at that time, things were, I guess, we, there was not enough brothers to keep things afloat. So after that, I think after the uh, war had gone full scale, then uh, they were still working to keep the, uh, the chapter uh, alive. So uh, I was in the military for three, three years and incidentally I was with the 92nd Infantry, the Buffalo Division, which was the only all black division in Europe uh, as an infantry division on the front line. And we were, oh, initially we landed in North Africa and then we went to, uh, we were in southern Italy and all the way up to southern France and southern Germany and we fought in many battles and, and we had received quite a bit of recognition during the time which I was very proud to become a member of the Buffalo Division and um, after the uh, war we came um, I think I was uh, discharged around the end of uh, 1945 and uh, I still had ties to go over to and well and let me digress for a minute because in uh, when I first started to stow in the junior college we were located uh, at Old Simmons School in the uh, 4300 block of St. Louis Avenue but in the meantime the Board of Education had been granted a uh, uh, they had uh, for a construction permit to build a new a school there and they had uh, picked a site at uh, Pendleton and Kennerly and they had started construction of the new school. So in the spring of 1940, they had just about completed it, and that's when we moved into the new building. We all had our own building, well, Esto Teachers College. And uh, the uh, at, after after that, the enrollment was increased because they had more space to uh, bring kids in. They brought in new faculty where they recruited from the high schools of Shawn and Sumner and brought them in, and they were very credible instructors and professors because they really worked hard with the students there and they have and they achieved a heck of a lot we had some some very very brilliant kids there and they had really developed and gone on in to become professionals in many fields but in the meantime we were uh after we had gotten our charter um dr uh Schofield, i think that he was dean of the lincoln university law school there at poro College, which was right on the corner of Pendleton and St. Ferdinand, 
at the time, uh, they had tried, there was a gentleman named Lord Gaines had tried to get into the law school at, at uh, Columbia. So rather than do that, they started this uh, law school at, uh, in St. Louis at uh, Portal College, uh, which they had uh, maybe a dozen or so uh, black students there because they couldn't get into this law school at uh, Columbia. And uh, uh, Dr. Scho Schofield, I think, I'm trying to, uh, but he was a, uh, great Kappa, and uh, he was also, I think at one time, he was the uh, grand pole mark for, or uh, he had a grand office at one, at one time, but he was with us and he came and, and advised us and gave us the, all the information we needed to, to go forward. So after that, uh, when I came home from the military, uh, things were kind of quiet at the school and, and there was no one, there was really not much activity so I uh, asked a number of the uh, brothers that had been made and those who were interested to come to my home. And we discussed how to get the chapter, get started and get things off the ground again. So a number of us, we worked together and we had a couple of activities and to raise some funds. And uh, then we talked to a number of the gentlemen uh, at the school who were interested in coming into the fraternity. And so in that way, we kind of got things moving again and by 1946 um, and there we had gotten things so going very well at the school and the uh, uh, number of scrollers we had and uh, we also had initiated some more brothers into it so and from that time on things kind of expanded they went to wash u and st louis u and uh, uh, i guess one of the other some of the other universities around and we kind of made a metropolitan type chapter where we had all of the schools involved in it. So from then on, we've been moving ahead and all the brothers are, are still uh, moving ahead and doing well. So this is large, as much of the history that I could recall now, but it's always, I've had such great love for the fraternity and I've enjoyed every minute that I've been a member. And I'm just hopefully that I'll be surviving and see many others come along through the years. And, I'm especially proud of number one son, Mike, of what is accomplishments, because I had never, in, in my wildest imagination, imagined him being a law wreath wearer, which is, as you say, 66 in, in over 1,000 members that we've had. It's really an accomplishment that he has done. And also, in his achievements in the business world, uh, which I had never, had no idea that he was interested in, and even becoming a lawyer. I had no idea that, because we, he had never professed being interested in all those things, but he's come along and done a great job, and, and Steve and my others and Mark, they have all done very well, and the grandkids, I'm proud of them also.